Although the E-Series armored weapons are known as the Doomsday Weapons of World War II Germany, the concept was actually proposed in May 1942. Compared to the massive E-100 heavy tank, the E-1025 tank destroyer is the most practical of the two models. The E-10 tank destroyer is the first design model of the E-Series that has practical value. Before it, there was the smaller E-5. The E-10 weighs about 10 to 20 tons and is positioned as a light tank destroyer, similar to a weasel, with its main function being anti-tank. Unlike the mainstream equipment already equipped or under development by the German army at that time, the E-10 is completely different from the mainstream thinking that was developed under the strong intervention of the Führer. First and foremost, the most suitable design for Germany at that time was standardization. The E-Series weapons emphasize standardization, which means using standardized components extensively between different equipment models. This can reduce the pressure on industrial production and logistics. Therefore, Dr. Porsche used the existing production resources as much as possible for research and development, not only for artillery, but also for gun shields, sighting devices, etc., which were basically borrowed from other equipment. In terms of overall design concept, the E-10 did not follow the high-end style of the German Panther and Tiger tanks at that time but instead followed the low and agile style of the Soviet tanks. The main modification is the use of a rear-mounted powertrain and rear-mounted drive wheels, which avoids a long drive shaft penetrating the hull and effectively reduces the height of the vehicle. The E-10 is expected to be lower than the Jagged Panther. In terms of armor protection, the E-10 also introduced the concept of sloped armor protection, with about 60 degree sloped armor on the front upper hull, which provides decent protection for 1942 standards. Through this series of designs, the E-10 is very different from the boxy German tanks like the Panzer IV at that time. The initial plan for the gun was to use a 75mm PK 39L48 gun, which was sufficient throughout World War II. The Jagd Panther was equipped with this model, and there are also claims that the production model will be equipped with a 75mm PAK 42 Ka 1 L70 gun, which will have a higher killing power than the late model Panther. The power is provided by a Maybach HL100 engine with an output power of 400 horsepower. The maximum speed is expected to reach 70 kilometers per hour. The suspension system is another major feature of the E-10. It not only retains the interleaved road wheels, but also installs hydraulic and pneumatic suspension on the front and rear road wheels. The related equipment is placed outside the main hull and does not affect the interior space. The driver can adjust the height of the hull according to the road conditions and can also lower the height during firing to improve the stability of the vehicle and reduce the impact of body sway on accuracy. The E-10 is expected to have two variants. One is a light tank with a turret, which is equipped with a 20mm machine gun or a 50mm tank gun, similar to the Lynx light tank. The other variant is a self-propelled gun, with a rotating gun mount directly installed in the middle and an exposed installation of a 105mm howitzer. The E-25 can be seen as an upgraded version of the E-10, with an enlarged hull and improved overall performance. It is expected to weigh about 27 tons. In terms of artillery, the E-25 was originally designed with a standard 75mm Pac-42 1L70 gun, and the frontal armor was increased to 80 meters. However, in order to guarantee interior space, the sloping angle was reduced to 45 degrees. In addition, the E-25 will also be equipped with a small auxiliary turret with a 20mm machine gun and an infrared night vision device. Theoretically, the E-25 has the ability to penetrate the frontal armor of early IS-2 heavy tanks at a distance of 1,200 meters, and it also has rare night combat capabilities at that time. Its drawback is that the engine remains unchanged, and increasing the weight of the vehicle will reduce its mobility. However, the larger size of the hull allows for engine upgrades, so this is not a major problem. For the E-25, the military's view is obviously different from the designer's idea. 
The general started from the actual production situation in Germany at that time and hoped that the E-25 would be equipped with the slightly less powerful 88 Mimirimati Kdugi Yaber 36 L-56 gun because the production of this gun was relatively easier and more suitable for increasing the production of tank destroyers. Although the E-1025 has good overall performance and would undoubtedly enhance the armored combat capabilities of the German army if it could be popularized, they did not become a reality. There are two main reasons for this. Firstly, it is still the old issue of German production capacity. Germany in the war no longer had spare production resources to adjust the production of E-1025. They had to work overtime to produce existing equipment, such as the Panzer IV and Sturmgeschutz III, and even then, they still could not meet the frontline demands. The factories were also occasionally bombed by the Allies. Secondly, the E-Series did not receive high recognition from the Führer. Even though the Führer supported projects like the Jagd Panther, he still hoped to turn the tide of the war with monstrous equipment like the Mouse. The E-1025, which looked like a fly swatter, did not fit the grand image in the Führer's mind, making it difficult to allocate resources from already struggling Germany.